but we can get started. This is a recorded meeting, Lake Management Committee, and I'll take attendance. So uh, down the road, Norm. Here. Mike Coombs. Here. Malcolm is not here. Mike DeBay. Here. Dick, I'm here. Uh, Scotty is not here. Karen is here. Uh, Deb. Here. Eric. Here. And Paul Murphy. I'm here. Okay. Nope. Uh, and then we have guests, Diane Gale, Ann Griscus, uh, Doug Moglin, uh, and Jerry. Jerry and don't, don't forget Jerry Patrick. And Jerry Patrick. Jerry Patrick. Okay. And Jason Gagir. <laughs> uh, yes, and Jason Jagir. Now, we okay. were expecting one more person, right? The gentleman from the uh, planning board, right? Yeah, he's supposed to be coming on. Mike Doherty. We can get started with our part with the minutes and all that. So let's let's do that. <clears throat> Has everybody had a chance to read the minutes? I hope. Yep. Any comments? Seeing none, hearing none. I'll take a motion to accept as written. I'll make that motion. All right, Deb. Accept as written. Accept as written, yeah. Motion. Norm will second. Second is? Norm. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? I'll right, run down the the list. Norm. Aye. Mike Coombs. Aye. Mike DeBay. Aye. Dick. Aye. Uh, Deb. Aye. Eric. Aye. And Paul. Aye. Okay. Unanimous confirmed. Okay. <coughs> Second. All right. So next, uh, let me see. Conservation uh, update. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, public comments. Any public comments? From any of our public that's on? A couple are muted. No? no? Okay. No comments. Uh, will they, Dick, will they be able to comment later when our guest shows up? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, that, that subject comes on um, after we do our CONCOM update, et cetera. Some, uh, Mike Doherty just came on. He's just connecting. Let me just note. Mike's coming in. We can start with the uh, CONCOM update then. Okay. Between Norm and Jerry. Take it, Norm. All right. Uh, there was a meeting scheduled for this past Monday night, but there was not a quorum, so the meeting was not held. Oh. Um, right. Right. But uh, Jean informed me that she had the first packet of LPP forms that uh, weren't up to snuff. So I picked them up. There were 11 of them. Uh, I dissected them a little bit. We have uh, three... Th Three forms that have no vessel number or no vessel owner filled out properly. We have three no vessel owner, but there was a vessel number. Hmm. There was two that may not be an error. It says it was dock only. Uh, as we know, there are some people who just put docks in and do not have a boat on them. Yeah. Uh, there were two that uh, she questioned whether the vessel owner actually lived on, at the at the residence because there was a the name was different than the than the than the owner, uh, and then there was uh, one with uh, no vessel number. Okay. So I'll start to pick away at it. Some of them we won't be able to do until summer <clears throat> in, inventory time. Yeah. But uh, the one with the uh, no, uh, no owner, but it has a vessel number. We'll uh, we'll go to the chief and try to get the vessel owner of those. Okay, all right, and that's it for Concom. 
update? That's it, pretty much. Okay. You're on again for uh, master plan update. Okay, master plan update. We had another meeting. I did submit five questions that we had discussed uh, at our prior meeting uh, for the possible survey. Um, and what's going to happen is the the consultant will will take all of our inputs and come back to, for the next meeting with the, what they believe are the appropriate questions to put on a survey. Good. Unfortunately, okay. that meeting I will not be there. However, uh -oh. <laughs> uh, so uh, we'll have to see. Maybe I can do some stuff by a by a uh, email or something. Okay. But. Uh, and uh, so we're, we're moving forward, uh, two meetings a month we're doing, uh, so things are going well. Okay. So All righty. And uh, this, so the survey, once you get a draft, you'll share that with us so we can, we can take a look at it. Yep, yep. Okay. Um, anything else on that, Norm, or are you all set? I'm all set. All right, I see we have a couple more joined us. Uh, is, that, is that Chris Pratt or is it Michelle? It's Michelle. Okay, just want to write it down on here. <laughs> and we have another one that's an iPhone. Who's muted. If you can unmute long enough to identify, please. Can you unmute it from your end, Karen? I asked him to unmute it and he didn't respond. Okay. All right. So we have an iPhone. <laughs> okay. Um, so now we can get started. The next thing is, uh, we did, uh, next one is 141 Congamon Road, uh, Mar Marina Issues, Congamon Road, uh, Marina Issues. And you have the paperwork. Uh, Dick, Dick, there yes. was a question if um, if any of the public wanted to uh, make a public comment. Oh, uh, prior to starting? Yeah, yeah. Sure. It, uh, so anyone who's, who's on from the general public, uh, did anyone want to make a public comment before we get into this? Uh, I, I did have a Michelle Pratt, 152 Berkshire Avenue. I did have um, a, a quick couple of comments, I guess. Okay. So um, I have not spoken with um, the, all of the board members or the general membership of Citizens Restoring Congamon, so I cannot speak on behalf of the entire group. However, um, part of the CRC mission is to um, try to preserve safety issues on the lake and promote safety issues on the lake. And so I think that the obvious concern is navigation through that area by the tunnel there um, and, and the amount of boats on the lake. I think, you know, since COVID especially, we've really seen a huge influx of folks using the lake, um, you know, which is wonderful. We love people being out there, but it's a narrow lake and, um, you know, a lot of people don't know the rules and there are a lot of, um, you know, things that can go wrong and navigation over towards the North Pond Tunnel is always a huge issue. And it's kind of exacerbated by how close the marina docks are there uh, to that one. And so I'm, as if I'm understanding correctly, I guess uh, they're talking about moving those docks over. Um, but I just, I know, you know, if you haven't boated, you haven't been out on the lake, you don't really realize the small amount of space. And when there's multiple vehicles coming through from one side to the other, um, that's a real concern and uh, keeping people safe like that. And, and again, the, the idea of, you know, 20, 40 more, more boats on the lake on the weekends is, is a concern for myself. And I believe it would be a concern for a number of, uh, CRC members as well. So that's um, something that I was hoping the planning board would be taking into consideration and CRC relies heavily on the partnership with LMC as LMC has, you know, so many experts that have um, studied the issues and are caring for the lake. So we really go by LMC judgment. So we would hope that um, this, this group's um, advice would be uh, considered 
in regard to, to these matters. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else on the public for public comment on that before we get started? Yes, sir. Somebody? Yes, sir. Diane? Ah. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yep. Yes. Uh, I'm just curious how, if this project were um, reconsidered and denied, if someone wanted to do this on the Connecticut side, how would you intervene? Uh, the the lake the lake is all the water is Massachusetts, right? So does that mean you can tell Suffield they can't put in a marina? Yeah, because you need a Chapter ninety one license from the state of Massachusetts in order to put a marina in. Okay. Right? Because the water is Massachusetts, all of the water is Massachusetts. Okay, thank you. And and who? Um, excuse me. Who was the, who's making the comment? Just so Diane I can. Gale. Diane. Okay, thank you. <laughs> all righty. Any others? Okay, so we can start. I, uh, I just wanted to, I, if you could, Jack. I just wanted to echo something for for Michelle. So, uh, Michelle, you, you're you come to a lot of the meetings, so you 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 may have heard a lot of this already. But um, you know, uh, uh, your your impressions are are not just um, they may be your impressions, but they're also bound out by the numbers and the facts. And a number of people on this committee did some research about what is considered safe, the safe number of boats on a lake. Uh, I, I then went and checked that also with our limnologist, and he basically agreed with, with uh, the studies. You know, what he has found is all the studies basically agree with the studies that I think Mike DeBay uncovered most of. And all of those studies indicate that we already, we are, we already have substantially more boats on Congamond than any study considers safe. By by actually a very large margin, um, so if, and in fact, even if we had nothing except for the two public boat launches, that would basically load our lakes. If all when somebody launches a boat, they go out on it, <laughs> um, and if we had nothing but the two public boat launches full, where everybody was out on the lake from just those boat launches and no other boats, that would put us. At, at the level that is considered the maximum safe level for water sports activities on a lake. So even which with is, nothing else. Which is eight to 10 acres per well, power boat. And actually what I just said would be five acres per power right, boat. Right, right. So, so that would be pushing eight to 10 is, is sort of considered kind of the borderline safe. There are a few places that push that all the way down to five. At five, that just covers our public launches with nothing else. So, so not only, yes, your impression is correct. The numbers bear it out. We, we do not need more boats on the lake. And it does create a safety issue. And, and uh, we, are, we are actually in the, the number is about two boats per acre versus eight to 10 acres per boat or five acres per boat. So, you know, we are many times what's considered safe. Um, yeah. yeah, anyway, so I just, I just wanted to, to make sure, you know, you, you knew Michelle that, that, yeah, you know, you're, I know those are your impressions, you're on the lake a lot and yeah, the, your, your impressions are borne out by the numbers as well. I guess I, I'm very curious too, since you just said uh, you're on the lake. Mike uh, Darty, do you happen to know if any of your members reside on Congamon or frequent it every weekend? Um, I don't think any of them reside on Congamon. I don't think so, but I know Dave Sutton uh, has a boat and is out there pretty regularly. Yeah. Um, I don't know about the others. I can't speak to them. And it was interesting. He Dave was uh, one of the ones that voted for reconsideration. 
<laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I don't I don't think he voted for reconsideration, right? I think he was just one of the people who who brought up the motion. I think that's correct. He was willing to do the motion um, and it didn't pass. Right. Do you know how what the vote was on it, on the motion? Uh, it was a four to one. Is that what it was? Um, that's just my memory. So I, I, but I think that's okay. I think, I think the only one was Dave. It was Dave? That, uh, Dave Sutton. Yeah. To be specific. Yeah. So he did vote for uh, reconsideration. Oh, okay. He did. All right. All right. So anyway, getting getting on with, uh, you know, we have done lots and lots of research on here, as you said, and and the, the Lake Management Committee has submitted many uh, in writing issues that we have uh, in the first place, adding the, the uh, additional boats on there, uh, which is in that same letter. They also, again, stressing navigation, which Michelle was talking about, because uh, certainly the one, uh, the north, the culvert that goes into North Pond from Middle Pond is very, very difficult to navigate. This is not enough room because the docks that are uh, in that cove prevent any, you really need to be able to look down through the tunnel and see if it's clear. It's a hundred foot long tunnel and you you know it's you can't put two boats side by side through it it's not not a two-way street it's a one-way street and boats have a tough time navigating especially if you have a windy day and you're trying to trying to work in a tight cove and not bang into something so the same concern is with the 150 foot long uh docks that are being proposed on the drawing that was provided which incidentally was provided not for review um, prior, prior to the meeting that uh, planning board had the other night. We did, get, did not get an opportunity to review that and comment on it as we did the original 11122 drawing. And that new one was supposed to address a lot of the issues raised in the, in the review of the 11121, issues raised by uh, LMC by uh, the, uh, DPW, uh, some others that, that, that commented on it. But again, we did not have that opportunity to do that review because that drawing was allowed to come in basically through the back door. Didn't that's go not through, true. That's didn't I'm go sorry, through the town clerk's true. office. Did not, not go through the town clerk's office. <laughs> yes or no? It did not go through the town clerk's office, correct? I have correct. no idea. I have absolutely no it idea. It did not. I'm telling you, it did not. Okay. Nor does it have to, by the way. Just so, I mean, if we want to be clear, it doesn't actually have to go through the clerk's office. But it's supposed to be available for review prior to it being was. presented. It, it was. was. Not. Okay. Because I checked with all the different departments. They did not see it. No, no, no. You're, uh, let me just, let's be very clear. Your objection is to it not being emailed to you as the chair of Lakes Management or whoever. The, I'm sorry, who is the chair of Lakes Management? I am the chair. Right? Okay. chair. Your, your objection is to it not, th this is the revised plan not being emailed to you by the town planner. That's and your objection. Your objection, and, no, no, let me just finish. Your objection yeah. is not to it not being available. Okay? We didn't even know it always, existed. Well, if you had come to the meeting, you would have known it existed because it was actually presented at that meeting. We got it maybe a few hours before the meeting. And normally you would not accept a drawing. I talked to Alan huh. Slesser today about that. He made very sure that drawings were not brought at the last minute. That's uh, So first of all, I've been the chair now for I don't know how many years. If Alan said that, I disagree with him because it happens all the time. And what happens is that we have a, a, a practice, I would say, um, not necessarily anything in writing, but a practice where if something comes in at the last minute, we will certainly allow it to be presented and discussed, but we are certainly not gonna close a meeting um, when we get something at the last minute. We are going to go to the next meeting so that people have an opportunity to come to the planner's office 
and review what they need to review and offer their comments at the next meeting. That's been our practice since, it's certainly before I've been the chair, but certainly while I was the chair. And I, and I can tell you that while Alan was the planner, the copies would either be paper or emailed out as practice as soon as they were received. So, because even the public doesn't know that they're there. Like I said, they came in hours before the meeting and they were presented at the meeting. So everybody who attended that meeting was aware that there were new plans. Um, and I simply don't think that they make as big a change as you think they do, um, but. Well, it's the absence of change too. <laughs> They didn't address all the things that were supposed that were were uh, brought up one way or the other. But one of my frustrations is that if this is such an important issue and you have such strong feelings about it, it strikes me that you would be at the meetings to address these issues. I could spend and my life at like meetings. It's normally one sends out that information, Mike. It was on the agenda. It was referenced at the last meeting as to when we we're continuing it to. I think and it that's was why we attended on the first. No, because I'm if a, you attended on the first, then you would have seen that plan that you're saying that you never had a chance to review. Never had a chance to see it. Okay. Be common courtesy to email it out or or drop or send us an email and say it's available in the planning board room or whatever, because the Building inspector did not see it. Conservation did not see it. Lake management did not see it. And DPW did not see it. That's wrong. And you said that the other night and you were corrected and you're saying it again. You're wrong. Randy Brown saw it. And he got it. He got it the back door from uh, Rob Levesque. He emailed me that. He had to ask for it from Rob Levesque. Okay. So again, uh, I, he could say it, it, it I find anyway. it hard to believe so what you're telling me is that Randy Brown had no means of getting that plan in, from including from the town planner who sits next to him for 20 hours a day a week uh, so that such that he had to email Rob Levesque to get a copy of that plan he got it from Rob. I know that. I understand that, but I don't think he needed to. He may have wanted to in the in a you know. But more don't you think it would be a better basis. better process to notify the if we're all going to work together as a team to notify the rest of the eight boards of its existence? That's a simple email. Then right? then then we screwed up and and. I think so. And then we screwed up, I guess. So, and that's why we're in the predicament we're in now. Uh, it, it also strikes me as good practice that if you have such a vested interest in, in, in a hearing that is ongoing, that you would show up to the meetings. That also seems like a good practice. Um, so, if we screwed up, then we yeah. screwed up. And I apologize for that. And we'll certainly take care in the future to make sure that any revised plan, not just the first one, any right. revised plan. Uh, do you want every single plan for every single thing or just something that's on the, the lakes? To do with the lakes. Lake okay. management probably is just interested in ones on the lake, right? Okay. So any single plan, I will tell, tell John Goddard, I'll put an email, I'll CC you on it. But, it, yeah, but even, if, even if it's overkill and you wind up letting us know that there's new plans for X, Y, Z, that's okay. Rather have the information and say not applicable, and that's know? fine. We will certainly make okay. sure that uh, on a on a basis where there's any thought that this may affect the lakes, right. that you are on an ongoing basis given whatever comes in. We appreciate that. Okay, so back to the 150 foot long docks. We that um, we we can revisit that. I understand planning board is not in the in the dock business. <laughs> or, or the uh, uh, no, knowledgeable about what goes on on the waterfront, but right. it's a it's an issue with safety, which we are very much uh, worried so, about. So, 
So I have a question just because I, I don't actually know how things work. You know, I, um, in, in a sense, uh, you know, I heard Doug describe, you know, they're kind of like they're swim lanes. In other words, you know, different parts of the town government have swim lanes. They're, you know, things that are in their bailiwick and things that are not in their bailiwick, right? And so I actually don't know all of the criteria that are in the planning board's bailiwick. So, you know, so I, I just don't know. So it kind of sounds like the, because we kind of wound up with a discussion that was just about parking spaces, which I might, might, might or might not have agreed with, but that was the discussion. They're talking so, about. So am I, when we, we were in the planning board meeting, it was all about parking spaces. The marina. So, so with regard to the marina, thank you. It, it might, it, do I have it right that basically the, the lake safety issues that we were trying to bring up are not issues that the planning board should be considering in making their decisions? That's somebody else's thing to consider? So Eric and I, um, certainly fair question. And let me try to best explain at least how I practice. And I can't speak to all the board members, but at least how I do it, which is, um, you know, we are a land use board. That is what we are in charge of. Um, so we are considering the land use. Um, it, parking is a big part of that. Uh, we actually have specific bylaws about parking. We have tables about parking. Uh, so that becomes a, a frequent topic of discussion when we're talking about projects um, and land use. Um, the, what is in the lake, um, becomes a much grayer area. Um, and I understand the safety component and to the extent that there's a safety component, I think there's at least an argument that it falls under the purview of the planning board. However, you know, we do to some degree try to stay in our lane. Um, I, you know, I, um, let me give you an example. We had a disc golf course uh, application uh, and they talked about utilizing um, alcohol in that location. And for us, you know, there's, we're not the alcohol licensing um, board, you know, that's going to be both by the Commonwealth and by the select board have to give licenses. So to us, that's less of an issue for us. And we kind of let that process play out where it should. Um, so, you know, there is a lot of process that needs to go on to put something in the water. And, and there has to be the chapter 91 license. Um, uh, there's still, I mean, because there's a wetlands issue, there still has to be a wetlands permit. Um, there still has to be um, uh, an easement and based on our decision, an easement from the planning board. So, uh, you know, but it, it, focusing on the chapter 91, I mean, that's, you know, we do have to give some deference to the fact that that issue is going to be resolved there and that we don't know better um, and we don't have the specialization to to deal with that, that the Commonwealth would have in dealing with the Chapter 91 license. Yeah, but let me just add one last thing, one last thing, just to sort of yeah. tie that together. Um, you know, the safety component was the, the issue that we focused on it, to the extent that we were discussing it. And I think everybody has to sort of realize and acknowledge that we asked for comments from the harbor master and he, he didn't have the same feelings that the lakes management committee had as to the safety issues. And so we as a board have to consider the entirety of what's presented to us and not just one single I, piece of evidence. I, I appreciate that, but I read what the harbor master wrote. What he wrote was there is no statute that dictates the number of boats that can be on the lake. That's and, what he said. He didn't say there's no safety issue with the number of boats on the lake. But he said, I would, there is no statute. He gave you a lawyer's answer. The legal answer is there is no statute that limits the number of boats on the lake, and that is factually correct. But so now there are yeah, multiple yeah, studies, and we can give you the copies of them, first. multiple yeah. studies that have been conducted by multiple states, and none of them, there is not one study that says anything anywhere close 
to the number of boats we have on the lake is safe. The pushing it as far as you can push it was five acres per boat. As far so, as you could push it, and most of the studies are saying 10 acres per boat. So let me just say what, and I, I can't, I don't have right in front of me what was submitted in writing. Um, I can I get a copy you, of it because I have it. No, no, that's fine. I'm sure I have I'll, it. I just don't have it, in, I don't have it in front of me. But what I can tell you is that um, Chief Landis came to our meeting and we discussed it with him at our meeting. It is, it is available for you to review. Uh, if you sure. go to our website, you can, you can access the recorded meeting. He came and discussed it. Um, you know, and you referenced the numbers and maybe I'm reading it incorrectly. And if I am, then, then that's on me. But here's the way I read the analysis that you did. I think you're comparing apples and oranges. And I'm not to say that if you compare orange and oranges, maybe that there's still an issue at least by the numbers, but you are taking, as I understand it, and from your writing, you're taking a number that is uh, how many acres per boat you should have, and that is boat being in use. Absolutely. And to, cal no, and to calculate and to make your calculation, you are taking every boat that is moored on no, the lake. No, absolutely not. Just divide. There's 300 usable acres. Divide that by five and you get 60. 60 boats. You don't have to do our, you don't have to calculate all the boats that are on the lake. You don't have to do any of that. Just take 300 usable acres and divide by five acres per boat and you get 60 boats. That is the maximum safe number. Our launches provide 60 boats. <laughs> so you don't have to you don't have to go and count all the boats and say oh but only some are in use and some are not it's simple 300 acres divided by five acres per boat would be 60 boats you have to you gotta gotta say at any moment there's way more than 60 boats right would you accept that yes um i wouldn't say at any moment but in a, on a on a on a typical on a average day, probably yes. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. And do you agree that 300 acres divided by five acres is 60 boats? Yes? Uh, uh, yes. Okay. So, <laughs> therefore, we are already overloaded. Yes? It sounds like you need to close the boat launches. We oh, wow. yeah, those state, state waters. Right? Those state state waters. We don't have the right. It is a public lake. It is a great pond. A great pond. Those launches are owned by the state of Massachusetts. We do not have the right to close those launches, but we certainly have some responsibility to not make the problem worse. There, the lakes are overloaded with boats. Adding a marina will make the problem worse. It is a safety issue. We can give you multiple studies that will show this. You don't have to count all the boats on the lake. I agree, when, when you do that count, it makes a very extreme number, but now you're creating an argument like the argument you gave, but it's really simple. Just 300 divided by five equals 60, and you're done. Right, but you just told me that you create this uh, unrealistic number. That's what you did in the letter that was submitted to us. I understand that. The, that, that and I understand that. And, and what I'm saying is I can give you a really simple thing. Anybody can do that math. That's grade school math. 300 acres divided by five acres per boat is 60 boats. Anybody can do that. You don't need a letter from us to do that. So can I ask, can I ask a question? Because I, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know, you know, and I, I, I don't have a boat and I'm not out there. I admittedly, yeah. um, if a homeowner on the lake wants to put on put in a dock what do they have to do get a permit there, there's a permit lpp For a permit from who the lake permitting program so that goes through the that goes through the conservation commission okay um, i do have the option to get a chapter 91 license but it's much right. simpler from to the do state of massachusetts right right but it, it it i can't imagine that this um i mean this doesn't i, I this doesn't sound like it's a new issue so I'm assuming that over the past 10 or 20 years, there have been um, uh, 
licenses granted from conservation for installing docks out there by homeowners. Yeah, but most of those docks are, are either permitting docks that were already there or replacements of old docks. It's not like people have built a bunch of new houses. Right. That the houses are here, the houses were there. In fact, in some cases, multiple houses were torn down to build one big house. And in that case, there are less docks than there were before. Because so, we track so, every year so that, we do our census. So, that, so there's no question that it's a longstanding problem. You're absolutely right. What we're saying is let's not make the problem worse. Let's the other thing is the other horrible. thing is the other thing is uh, Mike is that if one goes out on the lake, which we all of us are are lake people, and you go out on the lake and you can go look in the coves on South Pond and North Pond and even in Middle Pond, and there'll be anywhere from 30, 40, 50 boats in clusters. So Hi. those are those are lake residents that are migrating into clusters and tying up together. So you, you've got a total right there of another anywhere from say 50 to 80. If I don't count everybody else that's running around the lake uh, skiing and tubing, just the ones that are now actively boating and went into a corner, into a cove, you're looking at, plus the ramps, you're probably looking at easily 200, 250 boats at any busy. given time on Kangaman. Yeah, on a on a Saturday or Sunday. Yeah. yeah. Warm, warm summer day. But, yes. You know. you know, so so if your point is that this is not a new problem, you're absolutely right. What we're saying is let's not make the problem not make worse. It worse. Not, let's not add 40 more boats to mix. Uh, okay. and then the Have other you guys been has the lakes management committee been over a conservation every time there's a permit to put in a dock and saying, nope. You, I, I, we want to lessen the number of boats that are out there. And so we have to make hard decisions. And our decision is that we are not going to allow replacement or new docks to go into Congamon. You, you cannot deny a, a single use dock as an accessory what? use to any well, land, any waterfront land per the Great Brook, not Great Brook, <laughs> Great Ponds Act. So Massachusetts is a great pond. There are a set of regulations stipulated by by chapter 91, by the Massachusetts law, and we in the Conservation Commission have to operate within those constraints. So no, we're not in a position if somebody wants to put a lawful dock in from telling them they can't put a lawful dock in. We are in a position to say you can't put a marina in. The LP program does not permit marinas. Marinas have to be approved with a chapter 91 license. And, and, you know, if the answer is that, that the planning board, that, as you said, planning board is about land use. And so if the answer is that's where it ends, once we're at the edge of the water, you can say there's a safety issue, maybe there is, that's not really our problem, it's somebody else's problem. If that's the case, fine. I'd like to figure out who else's problem that is so that we can, we can figure out how to have that discussion. You know, we're concerned that the further this goes, the more momentum there is, the bigger push it's going to take to stop it. And so we're trying to stop it before it gets started. Adding 40 more boats is going to make the problem. You're not, no, stop, please. I, I can't. I, yeah. This has been a, a constant issue, not just with you yeah. folks, but with just in general over the last year. Facts are important. Yep. They're not adding 40 more boats. They're not. They're adding 20 at most. Oh, I, th I thought it was no. 40 boat slips. No. I thought, there were 40, more... I thought the application was for 40 the boat slips. The application slip was for 20 transient and 40 rentals. We didn't yeah, give that's... them what they wanted in their application. We oh, gave so them it... 20 transient and 20 rentals. I didn't realize that. Okay. I did not realize that. Thank you. Yep, you're right. Facts matter. So it's 20 boats. Okay. That's Correct. that's yeah. that's definitely better than and, 40. And <laughs> and we moved the 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 I'll call them docks. I don't we've called them various things over the course of the uh, of the hearing. Uh move the docks that are going uh perpendicular out into uh the the lake away from the culvert where that um um you know path is uh of going 
you know, through the culvert. Um, so we had and we they are still to address that issue. Long. They're still 150 feet long on the drawing. And again, that but that to me, I have to say, seems like a chapter 91 issue in large part. Again, you know, when we're staying in our lanes, that to me, it, it, and and I had a little trouble understanding from the letter. Um, are you talking about the, the traffic coming through the culvert it, that it's an issue for? Are you talking about traffic on the lake that is coming close to? Yes um, and yes. Yes and yes. Both. Okay. So to me, that seems more of a chapter 91 issue. And, uh, uh, you know, I can speak only for myself, but I have zero issue if they change the 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 length or the layout or whatever else of those docks. It doesn't, you know, we were trying to deal with what was raised as a potential safety issue coming through that culvert and move stuff away from that. Um, yeah. is, is there a way that we can work with the owner about, in, in particular, there's two, there's really two docks spaces, let's call it, you know, to worry about. One is the one to service the restaurant and the other is a marina. And so right now they're both 150 feet long and a lot of the problems can go away. The first one being the one to service the restaurant should be held back to 75 feet, just like our local permitting program and not allowed to go out to 150 feet into, into the lake, that, that would be a very, that's a big plus. Um, so if there's a way we can facilitate that and planning board can help us facilitate that in the, in, you know, for safety purposes, let's work together on it. Well, but it doesn't sound like, I, I'm not sure the planning board can do much, but I will tell you this just from, and, and I've never been through a chapter 91 license proceeding, so I know nothing about it, but let me just make a, I guess a little bit of an inference or a presumption, which is they're going to go through a process where I'm sure there's going to be an opportunity for comments um, or, you know, or positions made by, by you folks, right? I mean, I, I assume you would have some ability to submit a position in that chi chapter 91 license proceeding. Um, and so if this really is such a safety issue, it would seem to me that there's going to be at least some degree of risk about him not getting that chapter 91 license. So if he really wants that chapter 91 license, it would seem to me to be incumbent on him to try to sit down with you folks and work out a potential solution that would make everybody happy. That's the way at least I would assume it would go. Um, or he can sit and he can just take on the risk that the, the chapter 91 folks are going to hear what you have to say and yet still give him what he wants. It's one of the, you know, he's got to take one path or the other and reducing the risk seems like the smarter path, but I don't know. We have a, que we have a question from uh, Michelle. I see your hand up. Thanks. Yeah, a super quick thought on that. Um, if the docks that are being used for folks coming in and out of the restaurant could be the ones that are not closest to the tunnel, um, I'm wondering if that would be of assistance as well, because those folks wouldn't be backing in and out and navigating and jockeying for positions and things like that in the travel lane if they were at the farther end of the thing. That was just um, something I thought of. Michelle, let me give me one second. Um, because we did think of that, but let me. I think you actually flip-flopped it. I think they're actually on the Southern end now, the transient docks, I mean, on the Northern end to keep them away from the, uh, the neighbors. Is that oh. the way we ended up with it? I just can't yes. remember. We had that yes. discussion. We went through that process of figuring out which one would be more appropriate in which location. Um, I can't remember where we landed. Um, That's why I read it in the decision. And he very well, maybe right, Dick. I just can't. Uh, here we go. Let's see. Can I ask a question of Michael? Michael, on the restaurant itself, has that been approved? And what is the occupancy? That back deck can hold 100 people. So here's. What's going on with that? Yep. And spots for 20 boats. The boats on Congamong are mostly pontoon, 10 to 16 people. 
Not many half cars can hold 10 to 16 people. How does that get approved? They're all gonna be driving around the neighborhood. They're gonna be coming down on sunset. They're gonna be parking everywhere. If you're, if you're talking land use, how do you justify that? Uh, because we have um, set rules for parking um, and I'd have to pull it, but um, I think they needed 48 spots based on the occupancy that they were going to utilize. Um, for the rest. I, I don't buy that. Okay. And, and that's, I guess that's a well, fair. That be, that's, that's a restaurant. What, what's the, what's the right? restaurant approved for? What did you approve the restaurant for? 98 what people, occupancy? right? Uh, it, it, so there's two different occupancies. One is in the summer and one is in the winter. Um, yep. I think the winter is going to be bigger than the, the summer is going to be bigger than the winter. I don't care what he says. You have a deck out there that can hold a hundred people. Okay. So here's at some point we have what's presented to us and we have to, um, take them at their word and use enforcement measures if they do not do what they are supposed to do and what's in their special permit. So, and I can't grab it right now, but it's something like 90 or 90 something in the summer uh, and 120 or so in the winter as far as occupancy at that restaurant, mm -hmm. okay? And I can assure you, because I said it countless times, um, that for the first year that that restaurant is open, uh, I, I, let me, let me say it this way. Um, well, no, let me say it that way. In, in the first year that that <laughs> restaurant is open, we are going to be ensuring, uh, and having, um, it, it'll probably be public safety or, you know, fire marshal going in and, and fire going in and seeing, making sure that they are, uh, meeting those occupancy requirements at peak times. Um, because that's what they're representing. And we couldn't agree with you more with it. We do not want that same parking issue over there. So that's what they represented. They had enough parking for that. And so we're gonna take their word at that and we are gonna hold them on a short leash and make sure that that is what they are actually doing. Okay, I'll buy that on the restaurant. You have 10 parking spots for 20 boats which will require two to three cars for every pontoon boat. Where do those people park? How big are pontoon boats? Hold anywhere big, from 25 feet. My, mine holds 16. Okay, but they're not putting in boats of that size into these. Yes, they are. They are not. All of Kurt's boats are pontoons. He's not <laughs> not put pontoon boats in there. The, the vet, um, uh, they are Mark, not. When we do, a, you know, we do a boat survey each year. No. Of, of the whole lake and uh, pontoon boats dominate the, uh, the I'm boat sure they on. do. I'm sure I'm, I'm, I, I have no doubt that they do. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, a boat of 25 feet is not going in this marina. Because there is there. Yeah, something that that is. So, so are you saying you put a stipulation in on the maximum length boat they can put in somewhere in there. And I can't remember. Um, I believe it made it either into the decision or in the site plan. And mm -hmm. if it didn't, you come to me and I will write you an affidavit and you can go back to the video and you can show it to whoever you want at chapter 91 and say, this is what he represented when he came and got his permit. Because that was represented. I just can't remember <laughs> how it got documented in there. I believe it did, but at a minimum, that was an issue that we discussed and that's what was represented. So the so so I'm because he does want to rent spaces. I'm I'm sure that he must have said that he wants if he was being truthful that the boats have got to be at least 22 feet long because otherwise these going to be almost no boats he can rent to. So I'm right. pretty sure he, if he's being truthful with you, he's that's got to be there. And the 22 foot pontoon boat, most of those are rated for 10 to 12 people. And even if they're not all full, if they have eight or nine people, then you're looking at two cars bringing the people in for that boat. And so the concern is that population of cars per car to boat ratio doesn't look right. 
based on what we've seen. But here's what I didn't see mm. from, and I know that you guys sent over some, I want to say older studies, right? From the, I think there was a book or something about, about parking at marinas. Um, did, was that, did that come from you folks or did that come from no, someone else? No, somebody okay. brought some stuff from the Cape, which the, it's, a, it's a different animal because we, we have experience. We've, we've managed the ramps now for 30 years and, and we've got a public parking area next door uh, where, non, where the non-trailer, non-boat people have to park. And the typically anybody that comes in with a uh, a pontoon will put at least one additional vehicle in that overflow area, so that's two vehicles. And if you've got some, if you've got you know a large pontoon and a gang, you'll find that they'll come over and park a couple vehicles next door because they cannot park in the ramp; they have to park outside the ramp. So they're either parked at the entrance. There's spaces there or in the overflow area. Um, you know, they take up a lot of space. And even a, a if you take a, a typical speedboat that's, you know, say a 19 footer, you're going to have half a dozen people on a lot of those. That's two cars. So then uh, I guess, why is the Cape different? It's, now, the lake, I, I can tell you that the lake brings large parties of people on boats. So does the Cape. I don't know that. I do. It depends I, I on... Know I, that, I know that marina. I, I go there every single year. Well, where hmm. do they park them all? They have, they have parking lots for that, for that marina. I yes. mean, I, 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 but they're not huge by any stretch of the imagination. They have very limited parking over there. Um, they have they half, half a space for a, a vehicle. I, uh, I'm sorry. Is this boat? is this Cape on the ocean or or on a lake in the Cape? This is on um, a uh, I'm trying to think. It's probably a bit of a unique scenario. It goes to the ocean. It's on the no it's on the northern side of the Cape. It's in West Dennis. It's the Swiss yeah. River. Um, there's a, um, but it's not sort of a large harbor. There's a there's a smaller pathway in where these marinas are. Um, yeah, the the the, the boat. It's interesting because boating behaviors of lake boaters versus uh, ocean and tributary boaters are quite different. What you find with with ocean and tributary boaters is a lot of them actually own the boats. But if you pay attention, those boats never go out. You're, you'll see an incredible number of those boats that they could be tied up like the whole year or they go out twice in a year. It's very different from lake boaters. And then the other big difference is when you, you, know, when, when you, when you come to the lake, sitting there, it, it's not like being at the ocean. It's just, it's a completely different thing. Lake boaters and ocean boaters different beast they'll different come beast. spend a day and and uh you know hang out on their pontoon boats swim off them uh, you know go over into coves and and whatnot tie up with others and they'll be well, out there and, all day long well and water skiing and and tubing very little of that is done on the ocean because of the ocean waves right it's more fishing cruising and fishing it, it's it's kind of a it's kind of a, a different beastie, but I, I think you know if you're interested, you know you can come during the regular season and see what goes on at the boat ramps. You know, as Dick says, Lake Management's been managing the boat ramps for decades, so we've got quite a bit of experience with seeing sort of the patterns of boaters on lake, um, and that's kind of what you see is that. Somebody comes, I mean, there are definitely some people who come with a small boat and it's just the people in that car and they get in the boat and that's all there is. Absolutely, there are some who do that. But quite yeah. a few, what you see is that they've, they're have they launching a boat where that boat is going to have eight or 10 people on it, sometimes more, but eight or 10 is a pretty typical number. And so they've got two cars, you know, the car that, the vehicle that pulled the boat and the vehicle they have to park someplace on. 
Right. Um, and they market someplace else. And that's kind of what we see. So, and, and I'd say this. Um, that is, we spent, we reached out to a lot of different people, tried to get any opinion, any bylaw, anything that sort of documented parking spots to boats, right? And, and it was tough to come by. Um, we took the limited information we had. Um, it seemed to suggest that the number of, while it may have used, used to be certainly a couple spots per boat, that seems to have been decreased in recent times. That's the sense that we got from what we looked at. It but was what we, way. what we, what we, sort of what we did to address if we were wrong on that or if there was an issue on that there is a look back provision in the decision which requires them to come and let me see if i can grab it um applicants required to attend a planning board meeting in the month of november after each voting season uh, for the first two years of marina operation to review and discuss the observed site circulation and general operation of the facility um, as it relates to uh, inclusive of the restaurant bar use and accessory marina use as it relates to off-street parking, vehicle circulation, and safety at the site. So they have to come back in. And if this is not working out, if, if there are people parking on Beach Road and there are people you know, parking illegally and this is a problem, then they're not going to continue with the marina which I, it also assumes that they're going to get the marina open and they have a lot of hurdles to get to that stage as well. But if they get there, um, there's a look back provision that for the first two years, we are going to be going and paying attention to how this plays out because it's a little bit of an unknown to us. So if it, so for example, if the parking is an issue then the planning board would say you must stop operating the marina. Uh, not necessarily. Well, would... so let me, I mean, look, if it's going to be meaningful, I, I, I want to get something meaningful. You, you, what you're suggesting is that if this really is an issue, if we really are getting two, two cars per boat and people are parking all over the place and it's an issue, then it's going to be reviewed. And just saying it's going to be reviewed doesn't do anything. I'm asking if it's an issue, are you going to say, come back and go, you have to stop operating the marina. It's clear that the parking's inadequate. So let me say two things on that. One is I'm a single member of the board, so I can only speak to myself. And, sure. and me, you know what I think is not always going to win the day. Um, yep. uh, my response to that, if there was significant parking issues where it was not working out, my response would be, and we'd have to look at the details of, of sort of what the excess was or what the problems were. But my mm -hmm. response generally would be, you're either going to cut down your occupancy or you're going to get rid of the marina. Okay. Or some combination of the other, uh, of, of okay. both. Because, you know, if it's a parking issue and you have two uses that you're using parking for, you got to pick, right? So yeah. that would be my Great. response to that situation. Good. Okay. I guess, I guess I would speak up and um, I'm listening to that response and we have the same issue at Louis B's for the last five years. There's all kinds of issues over there. Nothing's ever done, ever done. The boats are on the dock every year. They're supposedly finding them. Nothing's ever done. There, there, there's actually uh, how this Mike, is going to happen. I, I can, why will this be different? On that one. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, I, I, <laughs> I have, that issue has come before the board every single year and I have asked for enforcement every single year. Trust me, she is, uh, there is, as far as I know, enforcement going on over there because we are paying attention to that every single year. I think it, 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 last year, I think, well, maybe it wasn't last year, maybe it was the year before I, COVID gets a little messy now, but <laughs> at least within the last two years, I saw an ad about rentals over there and forwarded it to, to the building inspector and said, Go, go look at this because doing it again. So it's an issue we're following, I think, reasonably closely. So I would, I would respectfully disagree on, on that, I think. I, I, I think what well, Mike's bringing up is that we, we, 
we ha we have seen there have been enforcement actions, but no results. And I guess right now, Mike, there's actually a court case going on. There's actually a lawsuit associated with this. So there actually is something happening. I don't know what's me, happening, but I know something's happening. And let me just also say this, right? It's a little bit of a different situation. She's doing something that she does not have any legal right to do, right? right. Um, he, he would potentially, he, we have this permit to, you know, use as an enforcement measure and sort of take away something, um, you know, so rather than policing something that, that we just have to sort of police it, we have a little bit more of an enforcement measure here because we have a permit that we can take away a use right um, in this situation. I'd like to add one thing, uh, Mike, that you may or may not um, have, have to, you know, really understood is that that part of the road is actually a state right away it began as a state right away back in 1927 and it confirmed, affirmed in 1947, both layouts were state layouts of a state right away. So that area in which that um, restaurant resides, that is, it is turned over to the town, but it is a state right of way through there. So I'm not sure that it's as easy to give away the use of that of that property because we'd have to go to the state i believe because it wasn't ours to begin with uh and they may be uh part of the the process because the uh the state folks are adamant I've, I've talked to the right away people in the past and just very recently and they're adamant about you know maintaining ownership and nothing shall go in <laughs> uh uh, a town or state right away because whenever we do a state project on a town road we have to have a process that uh, that uh, demonstrates that we own the right of way the total right of way in which that work is done we have to buy it sometimes so dick then i'm going to tell you the exact same thing that i told you the other night then which is right. that it sounds like he won't be opening up the marina if that's okay. the case yeah, yeah. Uh, it's in, in, in just be clear, we didn't give him any kind of permission to use that. We okay. told him that he has to go and get an easement to use those spots. And until he gets the easement, he is not able to open up the marina. And so if your situation is accurate and they are not going to give him an easement to use the right of way, then that'll be then bad. not going to be a marina that's okay. being opened. Yep. Right. Yep. I think Chris Pratt has her hand up. <laughs> Michelle. Yeah. Chris I guess Pratt does have her hand up. It's okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I was just going to comment very briefly on that. But then to get back to what I'd asked before, I feel like if, if the parking's all over the place and people are parking where they're not supposed to be, I think the local PD is just going to ticket people. That could probably be like a really easy fix if people wind up with tickets. You know, they're not going to park outside where they're supposed to park, I would guess. But um, that really wasn't what I wanted to say. I know, you know, Mike had the burning question about the occupancy and that kind of thing. But my initial thing that I had mentioned was if the people that are coming in and out for their, uh, you know, pick up on foods and things like that, I, I get wanting to um, support the local uh, neighbors that are next door to the restaurant by moving that transient dock. But if we think about the priority, which to me would be safety, um, to move it to the side away from the navigation of the tunnel would really be most important because if you can picture in your mind or, you know, again, the vast majority of you guys are all boaters, you know what that's like if people are coming in and out of those docks over at PB&Js while people are going through to the North Pond and it's a mess. And it so- is. If you can move those people that are trying to back in and out of their slips with their takeout um, to the other side, you're really going to lower the amount of traffic that's messing around in that area dramatically. So I just feel like I don't know under whose purview that would fall, 
but like, I just think that's something that is very important to consider. <laughs> I get like the noise and the busyness for the neighbors, but when you live on the lake, you sign on for that. You sign on for jet skis, you sign on yes. for parties, <laughs> you sign on for whatever. It's what you have. It's part of the give and take of, of being here. Um, so that's just, that's my unsolicited two cents. And I thank you because I'm not a member of the committee and I appreciate being able to speak outside public comment. Thank you. Michelle, let me just say, um, uh, again, I, that strikes me as something that probably falls within chapter 91 and they can sort of do what they wish as far as assign um, where exactly that rental dock is going to go and which one it's going to be. Um, you know, like, and I, it's been a long couple of weeks, so my memory is slipping a little bit. Uh, if, if we did it because of the neighbors and that sounds right to me, um, but I just don't have it fresh in my head. Um, you, you are correct, though. Okay, right. so yeah, that, that may very well be why we did it. And that's, so we did flip it so that the transient was on the northernmost side and, um, or no, I'm sorry, the transient yeah. was in the middle and the um, rentals were on the northernmost side. Um, it sounds like it's a chapter 91 issue, but I would also say this, I don't remember the applicant being uh, all that uh, particular about which one was which. Um, and so it may very well be just a conversation um, that would be good. The applicant at some point that just says, you know, we think this is the better choice. Do you have any problem with it? And I don't think the board, if there was agreement, would have any problem. Um, you know, if we had to amend the 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 permit at some point in time, doing that. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. Does anybody else have comment yeah, Dick, on this? Dick, this is Mike DeBay. I have a question. If I could ask Mike uh, to order something. When uh, you, you push some of it off to the chapter 91, and obviously we usually get input to the chapter 91 because the state asked us what our opinion is on it. And our opinion probably isn't going to change much. And we're going to say we're not in favor of it and all our reasons why. When they come back and say, well, but the planning board already approved this, too bad. Where's the planning board going to stand on that when they tell that to the state? But I don't, I, so... My understanding, and this was represented by the applicant, and I, on my brief review, I saw something that confirmed it, which is I believe they have to have that use before they can apply for a Chapter 91 permit. It, it, that's the order in which it needs to go. So they have to get the use, and then they apply for a permit. If that is the order that, that you, you need to go in, getting the use really shouldn't mean much, right? I mean, it, it should be the chapter 91 permit that, or chapter 91 proceeding that is talking about um, the proper setup and safety and whatever else, and whether there should be a marina at all. I think that's the proper venue for it. Um, we're, we're just simply saying that we are okay with the potential use of this, focusing primarily on site plan and parking and things like that well, um, really the, the sequence really starts with having the adequate parking to support a, a marina and then second is how how is the marina defined where does it go and what configuration but you have to have the parking regardless but if, if, it's, if it's not clear from our decision I, you know and i don't know if i if i were able to do it or whether the board would agree to it but I don't mind setting out something, which is what the planning board process is, is or, or decision is thinking, which is that um, we, based on what we saw, made the decision as a, as a board that is not focused on lake issues, made the decision that we felt that 0.5 spaces per rental slip was an appropriate calculation. But to cover that, we put this look back provision to assure that there were not any issues going forward. We also took into account the, con the inherent problems with the layout over by the lakes and sort of having to accommodate that to some degree because of the small footprints that they have over there and the pre, you know, not non-conforming pre-existing uses and all that other stuff that we have to deal with when we're talking about properties down there. You know, we did want to at least be a, a bit consistent and try to get something productive in that property. 
Um, but, you know, I think we could probably lay out the sort of um, uh, built in checks that we put in in a letter, if that is something that is useful. Um, and, and to say that, you know, and, and frankly, with everything being online, you could probably just go pull the part of the meeting and play it for them. But I'm sure we've said, you know, we're going to defer to the chapter 91 proceeding to, to address some of these issues. I'm sure it got said multiple times throughout. This. I, I, I also, think, I think it was very useful. You know, the way you described it, I think was helpful and maybe helpful or in, may help to inform the chapter 91 folks that the planning board's focus is a land use focus. Hmm. It, it, you, and and you, you made it clear, you're not saying that I'm divorced from the water, but you're saying, look, our focus is land use. So we're, it, it, I'm paraphrasing you, tell me if I've got it right. The, the planning board's focus is really land use. We're looking to lean on the chapter 91, pro, chapter 91 process to address lake related issues. Our focus is land use and we wrote an okay for this based on land use. Is that a reasonable way to put it? I, I think generally, yes. Okay. One, other, one other thing, Mike, to consider and, and, and like I say, and keep in mind is that docks have to come out of the water December 1st. So he needs a place to store them. So the more docks there, I'm not sure how much room there is uh, on the waterfront where it's at a grade where you can actually get them out of the water. So what he selects for docks, the type of docks, have to be something that you can get them out of the water. Unless unless he gets a chapter 91 year round license. He, getting it, getting get that's gonna be- Yeah, very difficult. Because even, even Louis B's was not able to get a chapter 91. It, it so states in that license that they have to come out. So, the, so he's going to need to do that. But I, I think what might be useful here to, to counter, you know, what, what the concern Mike DeBay has, which I agree with, maybe part of the way we can help to counter that is, um, you know, Michael, is, Michael Doherty is offering to kind of write a little letter saying, hey, here's what we considered. I think that should go to the Chapter 91 folks so that they get it's not that the planning board looked at all the issues associated with the lake and said, yeah, we think this is fine. The planning board was focused on land use and based mm -hmm. on land use feels this is okay. The water use issues, that's for the chapter 91 process to look at, not really for the planning board to look at. Right. Not right. that you're divorced from it, but it's not your focus. Is that, that's fair, yes? Yeah, I mean, I guess I would just say, um, you know, I, I think I'd be more comfortable just setting out um, certainly that we're a land use board. Uh, certainly that, um, as I, and I, I, again, this is going to depend on the other members agreeing, but um, uh, my, the idea that we are going to give deference to um, the chapter 91 process for things such as um, design of the docks, um, you know, safety issues, location, things like that. Yeah. Um, and that, um, you know, to the extent that we um, made any um, uh, dis, you know, specific decisions about what we felt were the parking requirements or um, safety issues on the lake, um, you know, well, let's talk about the parking requirements. To the extent we made that decision, we put in a check to yep. uh, you know, make sure that that yeah. was an accurate um, assessment because we had very limited data. Uh, and to the extent that we made a decision on the safety of the lakes, um, you know, we certainly did so without having the expertise of a Chapter 91 uh, licensing body. Um, and that would certainly, we certainly defer to their expertise. Okay, I, so that I, the other thing is, is I, I think I, I think that would be helpful in preventing a situation where where the chapter ninety one folks say, "Yeah, somebody already looked at it; it's fine," um, which is what we don't want to have happen. We want them to, to do yeah. a considered a considered uh, discussion, and and I think it's helpful if you know if the planning board makes it clear we're a land use board. 
that's our major focus. Yeah, Mike, it, it might help you. You suggested earlier is to have a sit down with the owner and and go over what we're looking for because we we will be reviewing the chapter 91 license but it's a shame to have an input to he's got to have it designed that costs money you know and laying lines on paper it's easier to put them on paper so you have a chance of of passing rather than putting it on paper and then having to tear it up and start over you know i, I mean i would you know i i I'm, we're not the ones to talk to them. You guys know the issues. I mean, yeah. I, it's, and I, I don't, I mean, whether you think it should have at least your planner there, you know, and, and, uh, and, but we don't really have a role in that. I mean, it's, it's your, it's, it's, it's the, we're not, we don't have a role in the chapter 91 license other than I'm more than happy to at least raise the issue of the letter because I don't want our decision to be taken out of context and taken for more than what okay. it is. Okay. So I, that I, that I agree with. But it strikes me, you know, I'm not sure. And I, John can do whatever he wants. If he wants to be there, he's welcome to be there. Uh, I'm not saying I'd like, if, if I have plan, no control over him. If but, the planning board could prompt such a meeting, that would be very, very much appreciated because then it sounds like, you know, we're all going to work together on it and, and walk them through it. I will, what I will, what I, what I can do, um, and primarily because we have their info is, um, uh, reach out have john reach out to whether it's ken or whether it's rob levec or whoever it is or both of them and just say the lakes management committee is interested in meeting to discuss you know the process going forward um in in okay. obtaining the marina license um and you know that's what i can do and i, I can't you know say anything more than that but yeah. I, i'm happy to reach out and and then inform you as to what they said yep. that would be good Okay, I, I got a quick question uh, for you again, Michael. Dick brought up that the docks have to be out of the water. Has that been addressed where they are going to be located in the winter? Are they going? Oh, no, that's why they should be. But I mean, it, it's not. I don't, a lot I, of docks. I don't. That's not a. I don't know how that's a land use issue. If he has to, if he has to, you know, transport them somewhere or do whatever. I mean, that's that's a him issue, not so much a. Yeah. I mean, they have to come out, so he's got to he's got to take them out. And if he doesn't have room on the property to put them, then he's got to put them somewhere. So it's not so much a planning board land use issue as it is a logistics issue. I think um, he's got a requirement and he's got to meet it. It's not it's not our bylaw. It's not our requirement. Agreed. Okay, so now, as long as they're not taking up parking spots, if they take up parking spots, that is a yeah, that's a, that's an R issue, and right. we certainly be looking. At the, no, I mean we actually, you know, it made it clear to them. And again, I forget if it's in the decision or not, but it, it's in there enough in a general way um, that they need all those parking spots. And so we told them if uh, you want to use that corner uh, for snow clearance, uh, or if this if that's where the snow ends up, and right. you block parking spots, you can do that but you have less occupancy. So, you know, it, it's very clear what his occupancy is tied to the parking spots. And okay. so if he, hmm. if he, you know, messes with any parking spots, he's losing occupancy. Okay. Yep. Do we have anything else on it? Is everybody? No. Well, if if so, you don't say so, I just like to thank Michael Doherty uh, for participating tonight. You, yes, you absolutely. Completely. Thank you very much. Thank you. No problem. And I think you might have a comment from Mr. Moglin. Oh, okay. Mr. Moglin, you're still there somewhere? I am. And I, I somebody beat me to it. One, I wanted to thank Mike. I mean, uh, Mike's done a yeoman job in, as the chairman of the planning board and, you know, in, in especially over the last year and kind of herding cats and kind of <laughs> handling a lot of stuff that's come at, at that board. Um, I, I want to thank him for coming to this meeting. Um, to, to answer questions. And, you know, I, I deeply respect what he's doing here. And, you know, I think, you know, I, I sat through 90% uh, of the planning board hearing on, on this piece. Uh, from my perspective, I, I'd love to see that place put back to use. And, and yeah. at some point, and I, I don't <laughs> think that there's anyone that would disagree. Well, 
I shouldn't say that because I'm certain I will find <laughs> a handful of people that would disagree. But, um, you know, to have that place put back to some some productive use rather than sit there and decaying, I think, is in the town's interest. Absolutely. It has to be done right. And, you know, and, and I think Mike and his board has done an excellent job over the last several years. In, and I, I'm a big proponent of this. I've talked to you, Dick. I've talked to many other people in town about swim lanes. It's, it's kind of a thing. We got to all stay in our lane, you know, and it, whether it's the staying out of a board of health issue when you're on, on the planning board or staying out of a constant, or let the conservation commission do their job, let chapter 91 do their job because that's a process they all have to go in. And lake management has a key role to play around the conservation issues on this piece through the conservation commission through the chapter 91 process through that, the input was heard and taken into account on by the planning board through that thing. It may not be the ultimate answer that everyone on Lake, Lake Management wanted, but I believe that they took the input and made the best decision in the interest of the town. Um, and so, and then, you know, I, like I said, I've seen Mike, um, you know, come in front of a bunch of, of different boards and commissions after the fact to have a frank discussion as to you know what his thought process was and what the board's process does and, and I think it takes I, I, that's a big deal I think it's great and um, you know I want to thank you guys for the input that you guys provided to this and you know the expertise that comes into play and there's certainly a role to play for for lake management here around um, and anyone else for that matter um, you know CRC lake management concom and, and, and the public when the chapter 91 piece comes up or, or, you know, or through the, the CONCOM process, they're both gonna be very valuable. And you know, I liken some of this to other things that come in front, of the plan, in front of the planning board where they don't have a ton of say about, but they have to rule on it and have to make a decision. And, but there's another board that is in a lane. You know, used cars is a good example, right? They, they stamp a plan and for a site plan and it's just measuring off how many parking spots there are in the size of a parcel and boom. But the, the select board is the licensing authority for that, right? Or, or even when they're doing a review of the, of the Krabby Joe's piece here and they say, okay, but they don't weigh in on the conservation issue or if there's a septic issue for board of health or you know, for occupancy that may be even more limiting than what the planning board would, would be willing to allow based on the zone. That's the board of health's job to do their thing. So, you know, again, I just really wanted to thank Mike and, and you know, much appreciated. I, you know, I've had the opportunity to work with Mike now for a few years, and, you know, and having served on the planning board prior, um, it's a tough job and, and you yes. know, it's all volunteer and, and, you know, so thank you again. Yeah. Yeah. And thank you I, for coming on tonight with us, spending the time. And I, let me just say, I will tell you between a heavy planning board schedule and a ongoing trial uh at work i'm a bit testy so i apologize if i'm a little bit short but uh i'm a little sleep deprived at the moment so uh, um uh, but i'm glad that i could be slightly informative uh at times so um uh, hopefully we can you know get this moving forward and, and everybody can talk when they need to and, and you know get a result that everybody wants Okay. Okay. Does anybody so, else have anything succinct, uh, just, or can we move on? Dick, uh, Dick, I think uh, I'd probably everybody in Lake Management would like to get a copy of that decision, you know, because you know I clearly I, I, you know, Michael co corrected one of the things I had wrong, which I really appreciate. So I'd I'd like to get a copy of that that full. I I don't know if it's called a decision or a ruling or whatever the right. Is I'd like to get a full copy of it so I can read it and I'll really know. It's all, in your all it's in your reading file. Yep. Oh, okay. I missed it. It's in the reading Thanks. reading file, the whole thing. Okay, perfect. Just Anybody one more else? thank you to Michael for coming to talk to us. We appreciate right. it. Anytime. All right, we'll move I on learned, to I learned about the lake, so that's good. <laughs> I'm out on the lake if you want. We'll take you out. <laughs> right. <laughs> We'll, sh we'll show you on a busy Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I was going to say, you're going to take me out on the busiest possible day, aren't you? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty easy to do. <laughs> 95 right, out minute. when it's right. 95 out on a Saturday or Sunday. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Have a good night. Okay, thank good you. Night. Thank you. Good night, Michael. Good night. Right. Good night. So we'll continue on. We've got a few things. Few. Let me go back. Um,
few simple things. Um, the, just a quick update. Everybody understands the, the SPD boathouse. Uh, I marked, if you go down to the north ramp, you will see a white outline spray painted on the ground. That is the area, not of the building, but the area of the land in which a 20 foot by uh, 35 foot building will reside. Um, the state is giving by the town basically a 40 by whatever it is to the waterfront, about 35, 40 feet from the edge of the parking, basically down to the water. It varies, <coughs> varies a little because the shoreline's kind of uneven, but it's to the mean high water line. So we have a lot of other work to do on that. Uh, once, the, once we get a license from the state, then we, it has to go through CONCOM with the design. We already have a design. One of the officers, uh, Sergeant Fisk, is, can do that. He did a really, really nice job of the design uh, of the drawings. And uh, he's going to adjust them to make the, the building bigger, as Doug uh, Cameron suggested, <laughs> a, a larger building so that you can walk around all sides of the boat, you know, uh, bow, stern, port, starboard, uh, with five feet all around. So uh, that's why the building is, is growing a little bit. It's also going to give us space to store the buoys down at the ramp, not um, having them transported every year. And they, we, uh, we have money that Kurt is finishing up a trailer for us. So those buoys will sit on a trailer and we can just back the trailer into that or pull it in with a winch, you know, either way, it doesn't matter. So they would be stored in a caged in area and they're allowing us to put a fence around them on their property. So it's, it, I think this is gonna be a big plus, 24 seven access uh, for the boat. Um, they can just drive down, officer can hop, hop on the boat and take it right out. It'll be on like a sled uh, that on rails and you can just release the, uh, the, the, the winch that's it'd be an electric winch, but release it, go into the water, go out, do your thing, come back, sit on the sled, pull it back up in. So a lot, a lot of uh, improved access for police to the, uh, to the lake. Uh, North Ramp docks. We would like to put those in on the second, Saturday the second. So we'll be looking for volunteers to help put in the, uh, the, the four docks. This, the, what do you call it? The uh, police divers will help us. And if we can also, if uh, maybe there's some CRC folks that would like to join us again. Uh, Michelle, if you can try that on for size for the Saturday the 2nd at 8 a.m. Right, I got a thumbs up from Michelle. Do we have anybody uh, that right now is available that we can count on? Saturday the 2nd? Yes. Norm, Norm can make that. Okay. And it'd be myself. Uh, it's... Uh, Let's see, Paul, are you available by any chance? Possibly. I'm going to check my schedule on that one. All right. I'll put you down for a question mark. Okay. We'll have to, we'll have to ask Scotty on the side uh, because he's not here tonight. Yeah, this is Mike DeBay. I, I, yeah. I'm pretty sure I'm open on the second. I was checking my okay. calendar while you're talking. And maybe maybe your brother is too. It'd be great. Yeah. Oh, if you can check with him, that would be good. I'll check with him and I'll send you an email. Okay. So we've got, I think we've got enough if we can get a couple of volunteers out of CRC uh, and plus the divers, it'll make light work for everybody. Uh, the buoys, I had an email from Rick Wylott. He says he's back in the buoy business, but PD also <laughs> will help on those. Uh, we've got an officer there who, who uh, took care of him while Mike was out of commission. So uh, while Rick was out of commission. And he's, he's uh, offering to do the same thing this year to help out. So it's really good because then we have multiple people that can uh, take care of buoys. We have four brand new ones. Uh, just have to put lanyards on them, which I already have made. 
that, and that's they the, will go in service. Does our does our boat run? Yeah, our boat runs. It's I've got to ask Kurt to put it in now. Uh, I sent myself an email to ask him tomorrow to to uh, put it in the water. It'll be stored down at uh, Saunders until our docks are in. Uh, Dick, I'd like to be involved in that also with the uh, boys. Okay, who was that? That was Paul. It was Paul. Oh, yeah. Okay. Super. Dick, do we have uh, the new buoys yet? The ones with the lights? We have none with lights because we don't have any money to buy lights. The um, buoy prices went up unbelievable. They took about a 20% hike and shipping went out. As, as, as everybody knows, you go to ship something now and oh my God, you, you got to take out a second mortgage. Um, Michelle has oh. her hand up. Do we know how much money we need uh, for the lights? Uh, well, we have to. One thing we don't have yet is uh, the guards for them and the mounting features. But we do have Mike Westcott has gotten air tanks, uh, you know, dive tanks. And those are perfect for diameter and wall thickness. And we have a design. So the next thing is Mike myself and the sheriff, because the sheriff's gonna have them made, the, those guards and mounting features will be made by the prisoners. So then the, the buoy lights are about 400 odd dollars a piece. So, uh, Mich Michelle has her hand up. Yes. Michelle? Yeah, two things. Um, so CRC did vote to put forward funds for the lights. Okay. Um, so, yep. So last I had heard last year, um, the, a demo or two was going to go out to see kind of how things went uh, yes. and how they lasted and things like that. And that was already accounted for in terms of funding, but um, CRC definitely uh, voted to put that forth uh, okay. from our organization. So we would we would love to see that followed up on. And um, that offer obviously still stands, was voted upon by our board and our general membership. So that was um, one thing I wanted to make sure uh, that I commented upon. And then the other was the uh, last I had heard also that we needed a new motor for the LMC boat. Is that still the case? Well, what's happening there is that the police are... are seeking and so far they've gotten the the uh the thumbs up support from the select board and the finance committee and the capcom this is talking to the chief and uh so they feel they'll be able to get their new boat to replace i think their boat is 30 something years old if i remember correctly their whaler too small too old but it has a good new uh 90 horse uh motor on it so they are willing to give us that motor. Uh, it will take a thousand dollars to move it over. I've already uh, covered that, you know, with uh, with between Carl and the FinCom and Select Board and whatnot. They're willing to uh, make sure that money stays in the budget, in our budget, so we mm -hmm. can move the PD motor over to the lake boat. And that would be it's a ninety horse. We have a fifty on it now. That's really tired. I think that sucker is probably lucky if it could get out 35. <laughs> um, it's just worn out. So does that answer your, your question? Yeah, I think you're saying, yeah, I think you're saying you're set with a motor, it's going to be moved over because, you know, CRC is interested in knowing what projects are available. I don't think we're super interested in replacing things that are in normal budgets, right. but when, but when <laughs> things come up and there's a need, um, you know, we would like to be able to be supportive of that. And so we'd like to know from LMC what you all see as priorities okay. that we may be able to be assistant of a, do, of you a want, do you want to order the lights if, or do you want us to order them? You give us the money, reimburse them or what? Um, I really kind of think that we don't know exactly what to order. So if someone else were to give us the information, we could order it. It's not that we can't okay. order it, but we, we would need to be spoon fed every single specific about it so that we if don't. I, have if I get you a, a, a quote from them for two lights, 
Is that what you're going to do is two lights? We do one yes. on either, you know, at the sandbar, one on the beginning, one on the, you know, one on the northern end, one on the southern end. Yeah, Deb, did we say two or four? Do you recall? I don't have my notes in front of me. Sorry, I'm unmuting. We can, um, yeah, we can, if you don't know, we can talk about it offline. Yeah, I'd okay. have to look back yeah. at my minutes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's not, it's not critical right now. Yeah, we, we would like to do that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, the 91 chestnut circle you have, which is pages 48 to 50, it's really sitting right now in with conservation as to what to do there. We've got a condition where a person who does not live on the lake has put in a dock on private land that's not theirs. <laughs> and, and they and don't have permission? <laughs> without permission, right. Oh, really? How the hell did that happen? Never happens. <laughs> so at any rate, it, I input conservation. We may be asked to help them on that, you know, get pictures from out in the water. Uh, there are pictures that were taken from the land looking at it, and I included those in, in uh, sheet and pages 48 through 50. So it is a valid problem. Um, and I think we have to help them. It's not. I, I it's, this is I Mike responded Bay. I on that, question. Dick. Hmm? I'm sorry. Let me. I responded ahead, on that. And um, yeah. those docks are on <laughs> Halliday Lane side of the. Uh, not on one is on that where the pictures were taken right the but they're on private property boats, that's on the holiday side right private property yeah, yeah private property but it's on the holiday side right but the the dock is does not belong to the person whose property yeah. on which it resides yeah. <laughs> and it's been there for a few years okay um i got a the, question it wasn't clear on the right up in there they were talking about are they still in were they in all winter no, I don't know that they were in all winter. Maybe uh, Mike would know. I do not. Know. I, I, I don't know. It doesn't about look that. like it. There. Okay, they're aluminum docks, so I don't think so. Um, the uh, also the LMC the the pay rate for this the uh, ramp attendance was approved by the select board the fifteen dollars per hour. So I'll be sending out those letters uh, probably tomorrow because they approved it on Monday night and I got notified Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, and one other, just one other quick reminder is if you have not been sworn in, you need to get sworn in, please. Uh, sometimes stop by the clerk's office. Uh, if, if you haven't, and there's a group, <clears throat> I can ask because our next meeting, I think will be in town hall. Uh, that's the intention. We're trying to do that. Um, and it will it will have the the owl in the room, you know, as as well as us. So we have to learn how to use the owl. So it'll be hybrid. It'll be hybrid. So anyway, um, that's all I had. Does anybody else have anything? No, it was a long one, but I think it was really good. We had to. It's the only way to do it is grunt it out. So at any rate, uh, have a motion to adjourn. Mike DeVay, I'll make I'll a motion D. to adjourn. Mike D, okay. Second? I'll second. Paul? Yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Good night. <laughs> <laughs>